In Creole Parametric, you can use a motion skeleton to combine mechanisms with top-down design. And again, this is the technique that I usually don't use, but I just want to show you for the sake of completeness. In a previous video, we created the actual motion skeleton, which is an assembly. It contains a sketch, and the sketch has different entities that are going to represent your ground and also the different moving components inside of your mechanism. In this video, we'll take a look at how to create some geometry and the actual parts that are going to be in the mechanism. All right, so to start off with, here I am in the assembly. Let's create our first component for the ground. So I'll click on the Create button, and then let's change the type to part over here. Here it's suggesting a name for the part. Uh, let's just call this the deployment ground. Just trying to come up with something different. And click the OK button. And here we can choose our default template that we are going to use. This is good. And here's what's different when you try to create a component in an assembly that contains a motion skeleton. You have the options to attach the component to a body. And now I'll choose the body that we want it attached to, in this case the ground, and then click the OK button. And so now the ground component is created. Let's open it in its own separate window. And here we have the part. You'll notice that it has an external merge feature. So it merges the geometry from the ground from the motion skeleton assembly. Now we can use this for creating native geometry. And I just want to check some, what set of units that I'm in over here. OK, that's good. Let's sketch on the datum plane called front. I happen to know that it's located. Uh, the sketch is located on the datum plane front. So we can select it, hit the sketch button. And now I'm just going to use the project button to grab a couple of the entities in here, this entity and this entity as well. That's good. Let's close out of the sketch. And now I'm going to extrude this. And it gives me a big value for the extrude. I'm going to change the depth to symmetric. Let's make it narrower. I think a value of 0.5 is good for what I'm showing over here. And to get some solid geometry in here, let's change this to solid. It's thickening to the inside. Now let's make this a little bit bigger. And hit the check mark. And so now I just have some geometry that is going to represent my ground over here. Let's hide the merge feature. And just so that it's easy to distinguish the different components in the assembly, let's change this to a different color. There we go, that's good. Now let's go back to the main window. So there we have our main component in here for the ground. Now let's create the gear component. And so we'll click the Create button. And I'm not going to go nuts with the geometry in here because I don't want this video to last 10 hours. So let's click the OK button out of here. Once again, it's using our start part and we will attach the component to the body and this time the body will be the gear component from the motion skeleton. Now I'll click the OK button out of here and you'll notice that it's got the little symbol, the glyph next to it in the model tree indicating that it is assembled to an under constrained component. All right, let's open up this in its own separate window and once again I can sketch on the datum plane front and I'll just use the project button and grab the two entities in here and close out of that and then let's hit the check mark now we will extrude this and again I'll change the depth to symmetric let's use a value of 0.5 in here that's good and I'm going to create one more feature in here just so that when I'm rotating this, you can see it rotating. I'm just going to put a notch in here. So let's sketch on this surface. And let me use as a reference this over here. And I'm just going to put in a rectangle. Let me throw in some center line to help me adjust the geometry. 
And let's put in a symmetric constraint just so that this is even about over here. And just throw in some other different dimensions. Let's change this to 0.75. Let's change this to 0.5. And let's change this to 0.125. Again, I just want to give you something that will be a visual indicator when I'm moving this around. All right, let's extrude that. Flip the direction. Let's do through all. And let's have this remove material. There we go. Nice little cut in there again, just as a visual aid. Let's hide the external merge just so that we don't have a whole lot of sketch entities showing up in the assembly. All right, so there we see it in here. And you'll notice that even though I'm sketching in one orientation, you'll notice that it's rotated inside of here. All right, let's continue on. Let's create another couple of components in here. Component create, and this is going to be a regular part, and this is going to be the deployment rack. And I'll click the OK button. Once again, we will attach to geometry, and this time we'll attach it to the rack part from the motion skeleton. Click the OK button. Open this part up in its own separate window. And let's go to our saved view for front. And now we have the external merge for the reference geometry for this one. Let's sketch on the datum plane front. And use as a sketch reference this entity over here. And I'm just going to make a rectangle. Let's put in a coincident constraint. Just get rid of that dimension and throw in a center line so I can throw in a symmetry constraint. In this rack, I'm going to make it be pretty narrow. I only just want to have a little bit of overlap between the geometry here and the geometry of the gear. Let's hit the check mark and then we're going to extrude this. Once again, we will do a symmetric depth of 0.5. And let's change the color of this component. All right, let's go back to the assembly. And so there you can see it. I just want to simulate some overlap between the gear and the rack and pinion that's going to be designed. Probably a little too much overlap in there. Yeah, let's change that. Let's go to the extrude feature here in the model tree or the sketch and use the edit dimensions. Let's change this to a value of 0.125. And we can regenerate. There we go. And so for the last component in here, it's going to be attached over here. Let's create a component part solid deployment latch click the OK button attach bo component to body we'll attach it to this and while I'm doing this I'm just gonna give my commentary on this again I'm not a big fan of motion skeletons uh, I'll admit that I've had trouble getting them to work in general and again it's you can see that it's, it's kind of you know confusing what we're doing over here with the different things all right so let's see let's for this one let's create once again a sketch on the datum plane called front sketch and let's create a project on this entity over here i'm going to hit the check mark let's extrude this to a depth symmetric 0.5 Actually, that's not the sketch that I want. But let me just hit the check mark here for a moment. Let me go back to the sketch, edit definition. Let's throw in some circles over here. Equal circles. And let's do a two tangent line. Let me go to my sketch view. To tangent line and let's change this to 
0.125. And normally I would use squiggle trim to get rid of a bunch of entities. Extrude is failing, that's okay because I'm going to delete it. Let's make the sketch visible again. And now I can use just sketch regions, grab all of this and extrude this. All right, let's change the depth to symmetric value of 0.5. And that's the last component that we're gonna have in here. All right, I know you are pretty bored. I am bored myself at this point. All right, so let's go back in here. Let's find a slightly different color to use. Okay, so now we have our different components in here. Wow, a lot of different datums in here. Let's turn off the datum plane display. And so when we test our motion, if I go to the drag over here and pick this, one of the components is moving. I need to go back in and put in some motion axis limits for what I actually want. I don't have the motion that I want for this component spinning or moving the rack. So let's go into mechanism mode in order to create it. Applications mechanism, and we'll go to the gears command. Let's choose this as, uh, let's see, rack and pinion. For the pinion motion axis, I'll pick this over here. For the rack motion axis, we'll pick the slider connection. And so let me see, is the direction right? It looks like this is spinning this way and this is going that way. I think it needs to be flipped. And let's click the OK button. Oops, forgot to put in the diameter of the pitch circle, which I think should be a value of 0.5. And now click the OK button and we can test the motion now. Let me turn off the display of the local coordinate systems. Let's now try dragging. Yeah, so that is sort of like the motion that I wanted from the motion skeleton. Again, it's just really crude geometry, but I'm just trying to show you the concept in here of the motion skeleton. Again, it's going to be an assembly. It's going to contain a sketch. As you start at defining your different connections, you're going to get axes created automatically for you as necessary. You're going to put some of the sketch entities into the ground component. Then you are going to create the components that are capable of motion. You define their connections and then you create the components in the actual assembly. They're going to be attached to the bodies over here and then you're going to have the available motion that you want. Again, not my usual technique for doing mechanisms with top-down design, but it is a technique that you can use. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.